Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm Yolanda, as you well know, and the librarian that's assigned to work with the English department. So I welcome you, Dr. Patricia Ventura, Thank to you. talk about your book here. And we wanted to have you over at the library to discuss aspects of it, why you wrote it, what interested you in the topic, and anything else you'd like to share about projects that are coming up. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started. Uh, well, let's see. Um, I'm in the English department at Spelman College and I'm an associate professor. My fields of study are um, what we call cultural studies, which is kind of like examining everyday life through a critical, analytical lens. Okay. And so the kinds of things that we often take for granted, the things that we just do in our day-to-day day -day lives, in cultural studies, we examine those and sure. see where that's coming from, why you know uh, people engage in the acts they do, what are the ideologies that influence that specifically. So um, in, in my field, I uh, translate that into teaching by talking, I teach classes in film, I teach classes in uh, critical thinking, okay. I teach classes in um, media studies in general, sure. and um, contemporary American culture, so okay. literature and film. Okay, great. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this um, piece of work here that you pushed out and got out here a little <laughs> bit ago, it pushed it on out. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's uh, called What's the title? Neoliberal yeah. Culture, right? And Living with American Neoliberalism. <clears throat> so I feel like that kind of encapsulates a lot of what I've just introduced about what cultural studies is. Sure. I'm looking at the U.S. context, and um, I'm talking about the idea of living with this, this idea of the neoliberalism, which a lot of people, I think, get, so com get confused about. What it is, basically, is uh, free market ideology. It says basically that capitalism and capitalist ideals should be part of everyday life, part of how we all view ourselves as consumers and, and instead of say maybe as citizens or as right. members of a society. Our primary role in neoliberal culture is consumer or what, well, I'll say worker, but even that less so. How do you get money to consume is up to you. We don't talk about that. It's just buy, buy, buy. Right. And see yourself as a product that's for sale as well. So construct yourself as a product for sale. So I talk about the ways in which this neoliberal culture um, infiltrates every aspect of contemporary life in the U.S. today. One of the things I found interesting is the various politicians that you quoted, they would seem like they would be on opposite ends of the spectrum, <laughs> right. but yet you meshed them together. Can you just talk a little bit about that because I found it very interesting and it reminded me again that it's about the consumerism and not necessarily about the red and the blue states as exactly. in America we often, often, often stay drawn against. Right, right. Well, so th th this, this idea of neoliberalism would put, say, a Bill Clinton in the same category as a Ronald Reagan. Right. Uh, because they're both promoting this free market ideology, free market culture, the idea that, that the market, that capitalism should shape the way we interact with each other and the way we see ourselves in the world. So, yeah, in the U.S. context, Democrat, Republican, it all tends to be pretty much on this neoliberal um, scale to greater or lesser extents. Were you always interested in this subject area? Is this something new? I know the book was written in 2011. 2012. 2012, I'm sorry. Um, but have you always been interested in this idea? Yeah. Um, well, when uh, one version or another. So uh, I did my, uh, my dissertation work for my PhD in globalization okay. culture. And I see globalization as a key component of this American neoliberal culture. Okay. Um, so, uh, so it's my interests have evolved, but they all tend to emerge from really critically thinking about everyday life and how it's shaped by these macro, you know, larger institutions sure. or larger impulses, like say globalization. You know, so these 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 forces that are consuming everyone in these kind of movements. So how these large forces impact us at our day-to-day -day individual levels. So as you said, it was written in 2012. What didn't you get to discuss, because it hadn't happened yet, that you would love to have discussed now if you got to write it in 2014 or even next year, yeah. that you just, it hadn't happened, so you couldn't put it in there? Well, I, I feel pretty good about what, what I discussed. I just, um, where my work is going, you know, is building on this, but going towards thinking more about really the kind of violence that this culture can create. So in the book, I talk, say, about 
things like shopping at Walmart or Oprah's book club, or you know, things that you know, not necessarily equated with violence, but when we have all of these kind of uh, uh, free market ideals that shape how we see each other, there have to be, uh, sadly, <laughs> they're in capitalism, they tend to be rooted in a kind of a violence that you know, requires oppressing poor people. Right. And so, you know, I, I try to, I'm thinking about that more. And I do have a chapter here on the Iraq War. Okay. And so that's kind of build, I would probably build on that more. Um, and I, you know, thinking about drone warfare particularly. And, oh, okay. and just how the kind of violence that actually this culture also creates, as well as being positive too, you know, but also the, the problems and, and, and yeah. Say some more about the Walmart aspect. Yeah. Because Walmart and Sam's Club is just, it's it's a phenomenon and absolutely well not just in the United States but globally it's a phenomenon absolutely. and it, particularly I know in recent years the whole issue of the gun control right. that has been heavily tied because it is a good old southern company or at least was rooted in good old southern well, I think Christian they would like traditions to promote themselves that right way, yeah. and but but because of some of the things that individuals have done right um, they've gotten themselves in that mix a little bit in a way probably that they would rather not be. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Well, the Walmart material, you know, it, it started, w when I started thinking about Walmart was actually in my dissertation phase where I started really researching Walmart. And um, one third of Americans shop there uh, weekly. Okay. That's, that's a, you that's know, a lot. cultural phenomenon. Right? Yes. So that's, that's a big part of U.S. culture. So, uh, I started thinking, but I was, as I mentioned, my dissertation was about globalization. So I was really looking at Walmart as this all-American company, but yet really impossible to exist without globalization, without right. having you know, Chinese labor Workers, that, right. or exactly. Central American labor that exactly. would be paid almost nothing. Right. So, so kind of putting those things together, down home, you know, just, uh, just folks kind of right. representation of the store combined with this you know globalization um, that's, that 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 takes the all American quality and really changes what that means. So um, yeah, so I, I was talking, I was thinking about Walmart, and while I was writing this project, say from the dissertation stage to finally when it came out in 2012, the image of Walmart has changed a lot in mm -hmm. that time. Yes. It used to be just all Americana. No one, you know, few people had complaints about it too. Wow, this company is squeezing out distributors. You know, um, it's 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 paying its workers really insanely low wages, and you see that shift. And now right. Walmart is a really polarizing company. Some people, you know, think it's still great because it allows them to exist because right. it's so affordable. Right. You know. But on the other hand, there's a lot of people who go, wait a minute, these big box stores are destroying sm small business. They are destroying, you know, the environments around them. Also, of course, they're you know exploiting their labor. So you have these the shift in the representation of Walmart. Just say in the in a decade, um, say between so basically in the the first decade of the 21st century. So I think that's really interesting too. So that development of that. So so these things keep shifting. You know the, the ideologies keep changing. Um, I just want to point out that the president of the Sam's Club <laughs> is the CEO. Uh, the CEO of Sam's Club, I'm yeah. sorry, is um, the chair of Spelman's board. Yes. And um, she's one of my classmates from Spelman. Oh, so just wonderful. in full disclosure, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just push that right on out there and um, let that be known. Um, what would you like to see in terms of just the culture, not necessarily to deal with Walmart, what would you like to see change? What would you like to see? We are in an academic institution and certainly going as back as far as the civil rights movement and women's movement, students were always very instrumental in change. Uh, what would you kind of like to see happen, and particularly maybe in a college environment? What would you right. like to see right. our students, not just maybe our Spelman students, but just the other students as well of the Atlanta University Center? What would you like to see them maybe do or embrace or dig into that might make a difference in terms of our cultural in this way? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, just at a minimum level, we need awareness, for sure, of, of these kind of ways in which we're being encouraged to conceive of ourselves, like who we are. Are we members of a society first, or are we, you know, for yourself consumers first? Right. And so if we see ourselves as members of a society, that has different kinds of implications sure. and different obligations that we have. Um, neoliberal culture encourages us to 
Uh, there's a famous quote. I'll, I'll, I'll let Margaret Thatcher tell you what, she, what neoliberal culture encourages us to think. It says, she says, um, there's no such thing as society. There are only individuals and their families. So if we, if we think in those terms, then we don't have obligations to anyone else. Correct. Right? We have obligations only to ourselves. But if we think in a, in a, from a different framework, then we begin to see, well, maybe I need to take responsibility for some of the decisions I'm making that have, because I need to see they have a larger impact than just my you know, world, myself, I should say. Absolutely. So that would be the first thing. We're just the, first, we have to be aware of what's going on, be aware of the terms. And then after that, I would hope then again, a movement towards supporting um, a, a, a notion of societal responsibility. And so that, yeah. you know, that is innumerable ways that people live that out. Right. Do you think that our students, the ones that you work with now, yeah. have some sense, particularly because of social media, yeah. On the one hand, it promotes individualism because, of course, you're tweeting about yourself and your day and your <laughs> life and your, right. it's all me, 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 me. On the other hand, they can become very engrossed through social media right. and supporting a cause such as, yeah. let's say, Trayvon Martin, exactly. where they exactly. all got behind that. What sense do you have of them seeing themselves not as the Margaret Thatcher individuals and family, but as part of the global society, and particularly at Spelman, where I know internationalism is one of the themes that they're really trying to promote there? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the the I think social media, as with every aspect of contemporary culture, it's how we use it, right? So right. it it can be hum tremendously progressive, it, it can be tremendously repressive. It sure. depends on, you know, who's using it, how. Even like something like Walmart, as we were discussing earlier, I mean, it, 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 the fact is it allows a lot of people to eat because sure. the prices are so low, right? So we have to get, think about alternatives and think about ways to make sure that, you know, the, the things that are out there are used for the benefit of the most people. So that's right. like, ideally that's what we would do. So same thing with social media. It can be tremendously, you know, powerful and progressive um, force. So I I'd like to think about that part of it, you know, and then encourage our students to rethink their relationship with these technologies to hopefully use them in these progressive ways and for progressive causes. However they view progressive, I just mean positive, let's put it that way. You know absolutely. What I mean? However absolutely. they view that. So what are you working on now, and what can we expect that you'll be continuing to work on? I know you've gotten this done, and I know that you've published other articles. So what else has come out since this in 2012 that you might want to talk about, or what else are you working on even for this summer? Well, you know, speaking of our stu my students at Spelman, um, I was inspired by them to actually uh, start writing. I told you I write about TV shows, uh, media. So I started uh, really thinking critically about the show Scandal because okay. our students love it. They absolutely they do. It. And so we, got, we have to say, okay, what, what is it about? What's going on? And I think it's one of these shows, again, that is with everything. There's, there are these, you know, we could call them utopia, progressive elements, and there are, you know, not so progressive. Absolutely. And, and so thinking about how the show works out, those intersections of the, the positive and negative, let's put it that way, and and how then our students relate to that and can connect to that and, sure. and why it's so powerful. And I think ultimately they find it empowering for them too. So I've been working on thinking about Scandal. Um, that's the, la the last thing I'm going to be presenting on that in the conference. And Judy later. Smith came to the campus a couple of times, I think last year, and did another talk somewhere off campus. I think I attended one of those. Oh, great, uh, yeah. yeah. So they seem to really embrace that. So, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's doesn't, a, it doesn't hurt that she dressed really nicely outside. <laughs> well, that's true, exactly. She looks fabulous. She looks all fabulous the time. all the time, yes. yes, yes As she all does. working women do, right? Every day. <laughs> So what's your other one? You mentioned Scandal. Is there another one that you're also Oh, well, so I'm just, I'm thinking about right that, but it's connect, I'm connecting it to some larger projects where I'm just thinking about violence. I mean, I'm looking at Scandal in relation to the kind of representations of torture sure. in that show. And I think it, that that show, for instance, is um, really speaking to 24 and its representation of violence and, and torture as, you know, what Americans do to get information. So we do whatever it takes. And so I'm looking at different ways in which, um, in contemporary culture, violence is uh, represented and, and naturalized. Um, I'm also studying Donald Rumsfeld, oh. <laughs> and again, and, and how he then just speaks about torture 
and how he represents. So let's go back. Yeah. Would you tell us who Donald Rumsfeld is so everyone can know? And we should probably Former say Secretary just Secretary of Defense who was in the Bush administration during the Iraq War and one of the architects of the, the Iraq War. Okay, and then just a sentence on Scandal, because we shouldn't assume everyone knows what Scandal is. Scandal so. is uh, an ABC television, you know, primetime drama, and why it's so relevant to our students is, I mean, one of the reasons, because, you know, as we right. were discussing, fashion is it's just one reason, and, yes. And, and she does, uh, Carrie Washington's character yeah. looks fabulous. Yes. Um, but, but really, the show um, is about an African American woman who is negotiating power in Washington, right. D.C. And so she's an aspirational character, but, and we also see, though, the kind of ways in which the system, she, see, she they don't hide the way the system um, can be oppressive against a single individual right. trying to make her way in the world, you know. I also so. think the fact that it's written by Shonda Rhimes, who's also an African -American, African-American woman. woman. So there's a lot of elements right. to why the students would um, find favor with it, let's Absolutely. just say. Absolutely. It's the first primetime uh, drama starring an African-American uh, woman featuring, you know, like centered on an African-American protagonist since, you know, I think 40 years since, since um, a show called Christy Love, I believe, from <laughs> way back. I was thinking of the nurse. I can't think of her name. Right. You're, yes. And, but Diane Carroll. For some reason, that gets classified somehow as more of a more comedy. I think. Oh, really? Okay. I think we, okay. we should look we into should that look more. But, okay. but definitely, this is the first one about 40 years. Absolutely. So, Very long time. Um, so that makes it relevant. And hopefully. we're in charge because she owns the business. It's her decisions. Right. Right. She doesn't work for anyone else. Right. And so, again, as you said, just very empowering. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you'd like to share with us about your work or what else you'll be doing or whatever's going on at Spelman? Today's research day at Spelman. Yes. I had several students um, present? present today. Great. And, yeah, and one of them was presenting about um, an aspect of neoliberal culture in relation to the to the film Paid in Full, oh, sure. which she was saying, you know, it's basically, it's a cult classic for kids her age. This was the film that all the boys were imitating. They all wanted to play, be one of the characters. So she's trying to analyze that. And I love that kind of, you know, people saying, okay, yeah, here's a, here's a film. It's not, this is not high culture. This is not, you know, like the best that's ever been made. But this is hugely important stuff, you know, and it's right. important because of, of how it's speaking to audiences. And, and if it is speaking to audiences, it's, it's relevant and worth analyzing, you know, no matter right. if, it's, if it seems like, it, it, you know, what TV shows, pop media, whatever it is, if it's speaking to um, an audience, we need to understand it. I think one of the things that I enjoy most about being in the academic environment, it took us a minute to get with the idea that media mattered. And I don't mean the news media, but I mean the TV right. shows Absolutely. and the yes. music and the things that we thought, yes. or maybe even our parents thought, didn't really mean anything, mm -hmm. and how they do help us navigate life in a good yes. or bad way. Yes. Yes. And so to Absolutely. ignore it means that you're ignoring understanding why some folks make the decisions they do, because they have embraced certain programs or certain themes that they got from media. Right. And so for us to ignore that means that we're losing an opportunity to learn, particularly from those that are younger than us, why they may, in some cases, do what they do. So I think it's wonderful to be in academia because we, we study those kinds of things yeah, and we ask yeah. why and what made you do that and what were you thinking. And we're not appalled or shocked right. in academia when they say, well, I watched this program and I watched it on a binge weekend and then I yes. went out and did whatever. I was listening to someone talk about the number of people who go to the Las Vegas hotels and ask the same questions as the hangover guys. Ah. They want to ask, you know, is it, what is it, page, re page ready uh -huh. and all of this right, stuff. Right, right, but right. because it's so ingrained in the right, culture, right. It, you know, it matters. It makes a difference. So. Yeah. And, but, you know, it's funny because sometimes I think our students, they also internalize that idea that it's, it doesn't really matter. So that every once in a while I'll have a student who I can tell has signed up for my Intro to Media Studies course because it also has popular culture in the title. It's right. Introduction to Media Studies and Popular Culture. It's like, oh, that'll be easy. And then they're having to read these theoretical, yes. you know, analyses yes. of how contemporary ideologies are, you know, shaped and shaped by these media. And oh, I just thought it was going to watch TV. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. You're it's always disappointing when we have to think have and to then think write. And think write. and write, think yes. And write, yeah. Original thought. Who knew? Exactly. So. Writing is painful, though, and I, I don't try to hide that from them. I tell, look, it's hard, and writing takes a long time. Yes. And it's hard work in the sense it's not physically demanding, 
but it's you have to be focused on it for and be willing to just sit in front of that computer if you handwrite I guess but in front of that computer for hours and just write through any blocks you have or just keep going even if it's terrible and have the guts to throw out half of what you wrote because it's not worth your time but it got you to the other half right. hopefully, which hopefully right. is good stuff and right. those are all hard lessons to learn absolutely but necessary particularly but. if you're going to keep growing at it yes well, we want to thank you so much for being a part of our Arthur series, our AUC Woodruff Great. Library Arthur series. And we welcome you back the next time you publish another book or an article that you'd like to discuss with us. We'd absolutely love to have you back. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ventura.